Hey, Matt Brown here from the band Dead Parade, and we'll be looking at three days. Probably, uh, maybe my favorite song of all time. So, uh, I've already done the guitar lesson for this one, so if you're looking for the guitar tabs and a guitar lesson on this one, just check that one out. And uh, I have transcribed all of the guitar and bass parts, or actually it's from a Guitar World transcription, but uh, if you'd like to see it, just please email me. My email is in the description. Alright, so let's check out this one. We are in standard tuning for this one, and we're in the key of B minor to start with. So I was playing the classic intro riff there. I'll play it again for you, and then we'll we'll break it down. All right, so real simple. Uh, what we're doing, we're starting with some hammer-ons from the open string to your second fret, coming up to the higher octave of B at your fourth fret. That right there is a hammer-on from open to two, and then a pull-off back to zero. And then we're playing the uh, F sharp on your fourth, or sorry, your second string at the fourth fret. And I'd recommend doing this with your first and third finger. And then the second half. And then we're doing G, G, F sharp, F sharp. So three, third fret, second fret. So that riff continues through the intro and the verses, and um, it, there's a slight variation on it at what I'm gonna call the pre-chorus, which is the uh, I'm a proud man anyway part, so I'll play that for you now. I guess the difference is um, the the every other measure is different from how we played it before. So uh, I guess just busier rhythms at the ends of the measures for the most part. So instead of uh, instead of we're gonna do and then you know we have the. And then the second time here we're doing this. So the last note would be an E. And that's gonna take us into this little part that's kind of like an interlude that's gonna take us back to the verse. So I will show you that next. Okay, so that is the uh, interlude part here. So uh, Eric Avery likes to play an awful lot of chords. Uh, his bass playing kind of reminds me of Paul, the original bass player for Tool, you know, and it's just kind of this dark, sinister, chordal sound. So what we're doing is playing a B5 power chord to start with. The guitar is playing a B. Um, so we're playing at the second and fourth frets on the middle two strings here, and that's the rhythm. And then we're coming to an A5 power chord, and you're going to want to fret this with the first and second fingers, and this is 0, 2, 2 on your three highest strings, because um, he's going to open up that uh, uh, first string a little bit like this. So that again, slowly. And then the, the lick we have here is a variation on the main theme. So it's, a le it's not sex, uh, sex tuplets, but some um, 32nd to 16th note figures, so make sure you're, you're nailing those rhythms right. And then the next measure we have, we're going an A5 to a B5 chord, so... To our G note. And then four 16th notes on F sharp take us back to the verse. So this part again sounds like... I said we go back to the verse we're gonna do another pre-chorus um, and when we do that we play the pre-chorus we're gonna skip the interlude that I just played and we're gonna go ahead the second time to the chorus part so let's check that out okay so 
so that is the riff. This is this is kind of tough to play. Uh, you know, lots of chords. So uh, what we're doing is a B five chord at first, and then to an A five, kind of doing the open A, uh, sorry, G string embellishment within the G five. So the next part, you're coming up to an E chord, low open E. Then you're playing uh, like a little major third shape on 14 and 13 here. Then we're playing over an A chord, um, and the bass is kind of implying like an A minor sound while the guitar is doing an A chord sound. It works though. Uh, so we're coming up to the 14th fret on the two high strings, and then we're going to leave the first finger down on the second string, then the pinky is going to come up and play 17, and then we're coming to 16. So that measures slowly. Measure we're back to the B5 and A5 chords. And then at the beginning of the next measure, we're going to strum our B5 thing. And then the end of the measure, we're doing real fast sextuplets between the fourth frets of the second and first string. So, is it slowly at tempo? Alright, so that riff. Um, we're going to play again, but we're only going to play the first three bars of it, so we're going to leave off the bar that goes. Alright, so uh, let's move on and I'm going to talk about the section that comes in where we have the tempo change. So all we're doing is uh, arpeggiating an E5 power chord across all four strings here. So uh, that I'll just do it real slowly for you and hopefully you can catch what's going on. So we have an o low open E, 799 here. It's a two bar riff that's going to repeat four times. Okay, so let's see what happens next. Alright, that's the next riff, and I'm going to call this like the, the new verse in this new section. So it's a very, you know, just a pentatonic riff that uh, Dave Navarro is playing over the E in E minor 7 chords. So what we're doing. That's 0757. Uh, the last two notes are on your third string, and then we're doing 075, and then the last seven is on your fourth string. So, all right. So uh, we're going to basically do that for a total of eight times uh, with the first, and then. Um, then uh, Perry's going to go into the All of Us with Wings, and we're going to continue to play it. And then after that, um, there's like a slight rhythmic variation on this riff, so I will show you that. So there's the next four bars, and uh, it's very similar to what I was just playing, just rhythmic variations on that stuff, so I'll do it slowly now. show you the next four bars and again these are very similar to what we were just doing but just some slight variations. So at the end here we're, we're coming to uh, an F sharp note uh, um, so I'll play that last measure slowly. That's it there. So seventh and ninth frets at the end of that last measure. All right, let's move on and see what's next. Next up is the guitar solo, and uh, what what's happening here is the a total of thirty five times, 
And there are some, if you listen real closely, he does some real little variations on, on uh, that idea. You know, like that. So, you know, to keep it interesting over 35 bars, uh, you know, play some slight variations. Okay, so then what happens next is um, as the, the rhythm section gets busier within the guitar solo um, and, and more intense, the bass gets more intense as well. So I'll play you those measures of variation now. So what we had at first there was the um, sort of the variation where you're going from the, the E to F sharp on the third string and then a rhythmic variation uh, that I'll play now for you slowly. So just being played out of your, your pentatonic position there. Um, so yeah, pretty easy. Let's check out the next riff. All he's doing here is just playing eighth notes with a staccato kind of feel. And personally, I hate playing this kind of staccato feel with a pick, but that is what he's doing. It's so much easier just to do it with the right hand fingers. Um, so as an aside, you might want to play this maybe how Flea played it with the fingers. It, to me, it makes maybe a little bit more sense. Um, anyway, I'm teaching it how Eric Avery originally recorded it. So we're gonna do that that bass uh, just quarter notes uh, or sorry just eighth notes for Jesus for for a while until we um, come in with the real heavy rock out erotic Jesus part. So let's see that riff. All right, there it is. So kind of more unconventional stuff here. And I'll do this and break it down real slowly with what's going on. So the lead into this riff is just, we have four uh, staccato eighth notes, then we're gonna go two open, three open. And he does a little uh, quarter step bend on the three there. Uh, the next measure, what he's doing is palm muting. And he's doing also muted notes too. So I'm muting like uh, left hand uh, right around the second fret. So uh, what you want to try to do is with a palm muting, try to eliminate the harmonic that you're hearing right there. So is the what we have on beat one. All right, beat two is this. So uh, high D, uh, two palm muted E's. The next measure, or the next B. So we have a, a palm muted open E, um, and then a palm muted five here on your third string, and then two mutes, then two mutes and an open, two mutes and an open again, then this five and some mutes, then that's it. So I'm guessing you're gonna want the taps for this. All right, so let me, let me break down these three measures really slowly. two bars of what I played there we are going to play four more times and then we are into the next riff all right so that's that's what we're doing the guitar is playing C to D and then an E chord we're doing the same thing third fret coming to the fifth fret and then staccato eighth notes all right, so let's see what happens next. So what what comes next is a bunch of staccato notes, and then he's gonna come in with these really big lush chords on bass. So the first chord is a D, um, and that is a 12 open 11 on your three high strings to a G slash D, and this one is done a 14 open 12, and then he's also embellishing it with the A note up there, um, so. time he's kind of making um, some sus sounds uh, with out of the D chord like so coming um, 
to the, the sus or version of the chord, which is just putting the 12th fret note down. Open A, open E, and then we're back into the, or, or just our open E type riffs. All right, so um, there is uh, uh, a part where the guitar solos itself, where it's playing some high chords, and the bass part there is just that. We're playing on one and the end of two, and, and then that's it. Now we're into the second and final guitar solo, and there's a lot going on, so I'll kind of break this down two measures at a time. So here's the first two measures. So here to slowly, we're just playing stuff on with um, the E minor scale within the first five frets. One, two, ready, go. All right, the next two bars now, I'll do at tempo then slowly. All right, now here they are slowly. One and two and three and go in. So doing a kind of taking us back to the, the beginning theme there as a little bit of a transition into our C chord that comes up next. So we have this. So that slowly, one, two, ready, go. So he's playing over a C5 and a, a D5 chord here, so pretty easy stuff. Um, and then uh, the next two bars, we're kind of going back to the, the low E minor stuff. So we have this at tempo. So very syncopated type riffing here now. So I'll do this real slowly. One, two, ready, go. All right, uh, the next two bars, and this is all figuring out like uh, comprising this, this big kind of figure that we're gonna talk about here in a second. So uh, here is the, the last two bars of this figure, so. At tempo. All right, now slowly. One and two and three and four and. So the big uh, riff that. Um, we're going to start repeating starts with the C chord and goes to the end of what I just showed you. So here's all of it. And then repeats. check out how this one ends. So the ending of the song is we're going to do the C to D thing at the beginning, just those two chords, and then playing uh, just a low open E note that holds for two notes, or two measures, sorry, and then a high E note on your ninth thread with your first string, which holds for two measures, and then at the end, we're going to play like a little E5 power chord and let it ring. So that's just seven and nine strumming those together, and then playing your low open E and letting it all ring together. So that does it for all of Three Days by James Addiction. Like I said, if you'd like the bass or guitar taps, just email me and please check out the guitar video if you're a guitarist and want to see that one too. Alright, thanks a lot to Matt Brown from the, the band Dead Parade. Thanks for sticking through a long lesson. So I appreciate it and I'll see you guys around for more.